I am Darius. It's a sugarless crystal. It's your sugar-free destination of you two. Enjoy me. I'm guilt-free. Indulge. All right. So today we have the best low-carb pound cake or keto pound cake, whichever one you want to go with. I have my thoughts on doing this versus because, okay, so the only, well, I've had many pound cakes, but the main two have always been the one out of the box and it's always been the Sara Lee one. You know the one they have in like the freezer aisle? Like it comes frozen and then you throw it out. It's like in like a little tin can. I've always had those two. Oh, and they do some individual wrappers. But anyway, without rambling, <laughs> I have only had those. And what I can tell is the, the texture is very, very different from t traditional cake. They're not very moist, they're actually rather dense. The odd thing about it is my thought process when it comes to baking, I didn't see how it was possible to pull off. Because the almond flour is loose and gritty and then the coconut flour is dense and hard, I guess you could say and crumbly so you would have to combine those two and i don't know the ratio would have to be like ah uh, the ratio would have to be perfect to even come close to it but i knew they had some on the internet so i said you know what what the heck let's try the ones they have on the internet now the ones with coconut flour i could look in the pictures and just tell they were a waste of time they were extremely dry looking but the ones with the almond flour I wasn't too I wasn't too sure about those either. The thing was, I went with the ones with sour cream and cream cheese. Now I haven't had a cake. I've had a pancake with those. I'll link that recipe the verses below. But I just uh, I don't know, man. I'm not expecting too much out of these. So we're gonna go ahead and dive into this. We have from three. Like my hair is long. It's getting a little long though. Like it's hanging over my ears now. I know. All right, <laughs> all right. So we ha we have three. We have Hey Keto Mama seasonally creations. Yeah, that that was like my third take saying it. It's fit to serve. All right. So let's start with fit to serve. Reading the comments on that one, they were all like, Oh my God, it's like the best pound cake I've ever had in my life. Oh, like I was like, Okay. It was just like real cake, which is, I ain't, I ain't never had a keto cake. Even my recipes are not like real cake. They're close, but they're not real cake. You know what I'm saying? I'm not even gonna sit here and lie to you and tell you that. It's just not gonna happen. There's a reason, I mean, I can give you fake alcohol, but you're gonna know alcohol when you taste it. You know what I'm saying? Not to say the fake alcohol won't get you drunk. Let's look at these ingredients for this one, the first one. All right, so we have one and one fourth a cup of almond flour, three fourths a cup of sugar substitute. I use erythritol, one tablespoon of baking powder, four to teaspoon of salt, four eggs, three and a half ounces of cream cheese at room temperature, four tablespoons of unsalted butter at room temperature, and one teaspoon of vanilla. This first one was rather loose. It was like really, really loose when it came to the batter, which I didn't think was a good thing but what the heck I mean okay so let's check out the texture like if you're looking at it it's very very spongy it does have a crumb but the, the wet cr it's like really wet looking like mm. and they all rose up and like they went back flat that's why they kind of look caved in and that comes from all the almond flour I'm guessing like the loose I mean just the loose batter and just uh, all right, let's dig in for this first one. The texture is very like, it's not dense at all. Nope, it's not dense. Like I said, the batter was super loose. I knew it was gonna happen. <laughs> I knew it was gonna happen. The cream cheese. Now, the cream cheese is very hidden in here. I would not know there was cream cheese in it if I hadn't made the recipe or read the ingredients. The mouthfeel is gritty and sort of a soggy bread, which doesn't sound appealing, and it wasn't eating it either. Overall, taste-wise, pound cake, nowhere near it, all right? <laughs> and it's supposed to be the best on the internet, all right? All right, but anyway, <laughs> pound cake flavor, nowhere near it. Like, you don't get that pound cake essence of it. 
And to me, like pound cake has like a very, very strong vanilla, vanilla, like vanilla wafer type feel to it. And this just doesn't have that at all. Is it disgusting? No. Can you eat it? Yeah. But don't eat it expecting pound cake. Eat, eat it expecting for it to be the cake that it is, you know? But most people tend to look for like replicas. They try to look for things that are as close to the original as possible. So I can't say just off that alone, I can't recommend this one. Moving along to the middle. All right, so as I said, when I, when I went through this, with this one, I was looking for ingredients. And this one was a lemon pound cake. No, no, it's not your traditional pound cake, but lemon pound cakes tends to be very popular. And if it and if they pull the texture off and the flavor, I mean, just simply take, taking the lemon extract out of it, that was like a minimal thing to do. And just replacing the lemon extract with vanilla extract, that would've been fine all together. This one had an icing that went along with it, a lemon ice, a lemon icing. I didn't make the icing because my thought on this was like why put sugar on top of um you know if it isn't good in the first place and to be honest like with the amount of when i read the ingredients off you'll see why i didn't choose it because it will be, it's going to be like super minty but it may be all right i don't know i i didn't i didn't try it out for the lemon pound cake itself it's two cups of almond flour two teaspoons of xanthan gum one cup of butter softened four ounces of cream cheese softened one third cup of erythritol six whole eggs two egg yolks, two teaspoons of lemon extract. Now for the icing, you have a half a cup of powdered erythritol, a fourth a cup of butter, six tablespoons of heavy cream, and two teaspoons of lemon extract. My thought in this is why they used the xanthan gum was the two teaspoons, I guess it was supposed to combine with the almond flour and the egg and try to make it more gluten-like but see that there's there's the issue with that xanthan gum is stretchy but it doesn't it doesn't necessarily replicate gluten to me what replicates gluten is when you add the almond flour and the coconut flour together and then bring the xanthan gum together but what the xanthan gum does then is it sticks to both of them and it makes them clump up a certain way to form a crumb in your final recipe it does not make it chewy that's that's not what makes it chewy the xanthan gum i mean it well I take that back. I'm not gonna say it can't make it chewy because it can add a chew due to the fact of the crumb that it creates between the coconut flour and the almond flour, but it's not gonna create a chew like, let's say the gelatin would. Let me stop talking and try it out. All right, so looking at this, looking at this one, it's more together, but it's still, it's spongy. Like it's still spongy. And to be honest, it has more of a wet look than the other one does. This particular one, the batter was actually thicker. Now, let's talk about eggs real fast before I do go into it. If you want to skip over me speaking and explaining things, in the description box, I always skip ahead to show when I'm actually tasting the recipes. So, when you use eggs in your recipes, eggs brings two things. Eggs bring two things, all right? Eggs like a, egg is a emulsifier, so it brings things together. Kind of like what xanthan gum does. So think oil and water. When you put things like eggs or xanthan gum, it makes them combine. And it makes like, on a molecular level, molecular level, it makes them stick together without separating all over again. So this is what the egg yolk does. Now the egg white, the egg white brings more of a hardness, more of a fluffiness. That's why when you beat the egg white separately, it fluffs up. When you beat the egg yolk separately, it just kind of sits there and it's just like sticky yolk, like yolk, yolky looking. Well, cause it's a yolk, but <laughs> that's what those tend to do in baking. You want more of a rise, pump up your egg whites, easy. You want more air, pump up your egg whites. You want something more further. You want something more dense, take your egg whites out and just stick with your egg yolks. But they're, when they're combined together, like they, they work, to me, depending on the dish, they work better together than separated. Let's taste this. Oh God.
I almost, I almost used all my water trying to wash that down. So from a confession standpoint, I forgot to put one of the egg yolks in there. I was rushing and I was watching Game of Thrones. You know, it comes out in April, so I had to catch up. Well, I've, I'm, I'm already caught up. I just wanted to rewatch it because I just love the show. Like, oh. So texture wise, I'm not gonna be too hard on the texture, but to be honest, I can still be kind of hard on the texture because that one egg yolk wouldn't have did very much. Now, when I bit it, the outside had like a crispness to it. It just, it was like the entire cake melted in my mouth. And that is not a good thing. You want it to have some sort of structure. I mean, when I say melt in my mouth, I mean, not like it was just so moist. Like it was just, uh, just melting slowly. Even a moist cake has a texture in your mouth, believe it or not. Even when it melts in your mouth, it still has a texture to it. The melt in your mouth I'm talking about is like mashed potatoes. Yeah, I, I can imagine your face when I said that. Yeah, you saw my face when I ate it. But <laughs> the lemon the lemon flavor, the lemon flavor works. I would actually take some of the liquid out of this one. <sighs> yeah, I think if some of the liquid was taken out and maybe like a tablespoon of coconut flour added, tablespoon, maybe two, this one could have been a winner. Like, because the texture is not horrible when it's not horrible visually, but as far as the mouth feel, those two things lowering the wet to your dry and adding something a little bit more uh, denser like coconut flour, something more drier to kind of help build a foundation. This probably could have this probably could have helped out a whole lot. Yeah, this probably could have been saved. But it's a no for me, dog. OK, the very last one we have here. This one, Hey Keto Mama. And I'm going to give the nutrition facts at the end of the video. I will put that in the, I'll put like a little fast forward down there in the description box as well. But I have something to say about that too. So the Keto Vanilla Pound Cake. All right, we have two cups of almond flour, a half a cup of butter, one cup of erythritol, two teaspoons of baking powder, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, one cup of sour cream, two ounces of cream cheese, and four large eggs. This one, this batter was loose as well, but looking at this texture, to be honest, like the texture is very, very similar to the first one. Very similar to the first one, actually. It's just slightly better. It's slightly better. And I left these in there a little longer than necessary because I was watching Game of Thrones. Maybe I should turn the TV off while I'm doing my um, YouTube stuff. I probably should. I think I think it would help. I've been making two mistakes already. <sighs> but I mean, it, it's not like it overcooked. It probably could have used some more drying out based off the way it looks. All right, let's go. Flavor-wise, that was the best out of three. Texture-wise, because I cooked it a little longer, the outside was a bit crispier than the num number one, but number one and number three have the same textures. But number three has a better flavor. You get more of that milky vanilla taste that you get from pound cake. But does it taste like pound cake? No. Would it get the job done with icing? Yeah, probably. It, it probably would, to be honest. I mean, because the, the taste is all right. Like, the taste isn't bad at all. I say it has that vanilla taste to it. It's just the, the structure, the structure, the structure. And once again, I hate to preach about the same thing over and over again, but it's the texture that kills the cake. But out of the three, number three, if you, if you like, were just dying, dying for a pound cake, I would go with that one. But uh, I don't know. Just almond flour by itself, when, it's, when you're trying to make a pound cake, it's just not gonna work. I just, and you know, I was speaking with a lady about the German chocolate cake. I would love a keto adapted version of a German chocolate cake, but I just don't see it happening. Like, it's just, some things you just can't bring over. I mean, I'm happy with the chocolate cake. You know, I mean, you know, me, me I guess, I guess it'll do and just save like the German chocolate for like a cheat day or something like that. Maybe like a once a year th type thing. 
like I do with my red velvet when I go to Orlando. It seems like we're all losers here. <laughs> I mean, based off the traditional pound, pound cake, like, man, like, I, I, feel so, I feel so teased. I think I'm going to go to the store and get a Sara Lee one just to calm my nerves. I'm not going to, I'm just playing. I'm not going to do it. I'm, I'm not going to do it. It's supposed to be snowing right now. Like, but nutrition facts for the first one. I think. Okay, so it says it yields 12. Oh, okay, this is for cut. Okay, so she split it up. She split it up into cupcakes. All right, so this, this works. All right, so as a cupcake, like I did myself, she said it yields 12 per serving, which is one, 102 calories, 9.6 grams of fat, so about one gram net carb, and three grams of protein. I was lazy how she wrote that out. But, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. All right. Okay, so what I was going to say, when it comes to my cake recipes, you may notice, like, certain some recipes, I don't put any nutrition packs. This is on purpose. When it comes to things like cake, I don't know how big of a slice you're going to cut. I can sit here and I can cut mine up, and this particular day, I may get nine slices. But the next day I cut it up, I may get ten. Next one day I might cut up, I might get seven. And all these things matter if you're counting your calories because, I mean, it's going to throw you off if you're really paying attention to what you're doing. So I don't put anything there. And if I don't put anything there, those particular meals, I, I don't really, I don't eat things like that when I'm watching my weight. Like right now, I'm not going to eat something where I can't really track it. Like if I'm cooking steak and butter, if I have butter left in the pan and I put two tablespoons down, well, how much was absorbed in the meat? How much was absorbed in the meat? How much am I going to lose by putting it on the plate? You know what I'm saying? When you're counting calories, like those little things matter. Like you have to be exact. So I don't, I don't eat things that I can't be close to being exact. Of course, nothing's going to be perfect. None, no, none of the calories are going to be perfect that you eat. None of them. But, you know, you, you want to try to be as close as possible. So that's my thoughts when it comes to cakes like these and then putting nutrition facts. If it's a cake, that I, I don't see how you're going to put nutrition facts. But if, it, if they put them in cupcakes, okay, boom. As a person doing the cupcakes, I can kind of break it down. Oh, I'm supposed to have 12. Well, maybe I got a little too much in this one and I need to spread it out more. Okay, now, now I have 12 cupcakes, so it's going to be even with what they said the macro should be. Cake number two says one slice, 240 calories, 23 grams of fat, nine grams <laughs> net carbs, and five grams of protein. It wouldn't be, I don't know how they did that nutrition fact. That wouldn't be right. You're not, son, you're not gonna get nine grams. That's a huge slice of that's a huge slice of cake. It's gonna have to be really thick. Number three, which was the best tasting one, she has one piece, one twelfth of the cake, or sixty-five grams. Now that I like, that I like, because you can actually cut the cake and weigh it out and get it and get these calories that she said. Um, calories two hundred forty-nine, five net carbs. 20 grams of fat and eight grams of protein. I'm just gonna round it up. Yeah, that was smart. And she had the best cake, best tasting one. She might have, she might know what she's doing over there. She might. That's gonna wrap it up for tonight. If you guys have any other verses or any other ideas you'd like me to go through, just hit me up in the comment section. I have some things coming. I have some things in mind. And I have some suggestions that were made before. This was actually a suggestion from two separate people. So I had, I had to make sure I got it done. Quick update on me. I am still on my 12 week cutting. Right now, with it being January, there are just other videos that I feel like are more important that I probably need to get out. But I will be doing a final 12 weeks because my 12 weeks will be up in the first week of February. And I'll do an ending video on those, particular, on those particular things. Signing off here, I am Darius. This is Sugarless Crystals, your sugar-free destination of YouTube. And I'm not a chef. I'm an entertainer. Bye.